Hi everyone. So you're writing some code and as part of writing your code, you're declaring some variables. And these variables, you want them to be accessible throughout your application or the parts of your application that you want, that you care about. Now, the question is this, how can you ensure the variables you create are accessible to the parts of the code you care about? And sometimes more importantly, how can you ensure the variables you create are not accessible to the rest of your application? Well, the answer to all of that falls under a bucket known as variable scope. And in this video, we'll learn all about what that means. So variable scope, the way I look at it is scope is basically a fancy word and it stands for availability and variable scope stands for variable availability. And the, a simple way of explaining that is, so this question, is this variable something I can access from where I am right now? And the study of that is variable scope. And it's actually not as complicated as I'm making it out to be. In JavaScript, you have two main scopes. One scope is global, the other one is local. So global scope is something that you probably use a lot so far, and it means that the variable to declare are available everywhere in your application. You don't have to think much about it. You declare your variable globally, it is available everywhere your code is running. And then you have something known as local scope. And this is a scope where the variables you declare are self-contained, just a function or you declare the variable in or any functions inside that particular function. So it is a little bit more narrow in how, how broad of an area it affects. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So a global scope to be more precise is a situation where the variables are declared on the window object. And that is a minor detail because more, more than likely, the way you're going to declare a global variable is you have a script tag and you declare a variable, in this case, just counter. And that's simply very specific, very simple, nothing, nothing crazy going on here. And what this means is that even though my variable is declared, I can use it from anywhere else. Like for example, from within a function. In this case, I have a function called return count and I'm returning the value of counter, which I can easily do because even though the variable is declared outside the function, it's declared globally. So therefore I can easily access it from inside this function without having to do any, anything extra. So to contrast that, to contrast the openness of the, the global variables, you have something known as the local scope. And in this case, the variables to declare are available only to the scope they're defined in, which is oftentimes a function block. So in this case, I have a function called set state. And inside of it, I'm declaring a variable called state, which I'm initializing to a value of one. So if I were to essentially see what the value of this is, within the set state function, I can have an alert statement and try to print the value of state, and I can totally see the value of it is one. Now, if I'm outside of that function, if I'm outside of this, the, the enclosure really created by set state, and I try to see what the value of the state variable is, I get a value of undefined. The reason is that the value, the variable state has been declared and localized to the set state function itself. And when I go outside of it, I no longer have access to what is inside the set state function. So that basically means that in a case like this, for example, where earlier I kind of mentioned that when you have local scope, it means that your variables are available only to the function you declared them in, but also any functions inside that function. And what that means is basically what I'm highlighting right here. So you have the set state function, and inside the set state function, you have the function called do something. And notice that even though the state variable is declared inside set state, because do something is inside the set state function, I can actually access that variable and do all the things that I would normally do, even though this particular variable wasn't declared inside do something itself. The general way I look at it is that if you are trying to access a variable, you can always look up and outward and be able to access the value that is stored by the variable. But if you're in this case where you have to look inward, you have to look inside the state function from where you are outside the alert state, you won't be able to do that. So outside and out is totally fine. Looking inside and in is totally not fine. And that's something that you will learn the hard way through experience if you are occasionally you know, mistyping where your variables are going and get the functions kind of, you know, out of, out of whack in certain areas. So here's a visualization of basically what I just meant. So the way I look at it is that each scope, think of it as like a, a circle. Think of it as like, a, like a, something that's a container that encloses something. So on the very outside, you have your global scope. And inside of it, you have many subscopes. You have scopes that are the local scopes, basically, where you have functions, you have functions within functions, you have all sorts of various structures that create their own scope that 
all the variables you declare inside are going to be self-contained inside of it. And of course, the more complicated case is, you know, where these solid circles are, which is you have functions inside functions, where if you declare any variables inside them, they create their own scope as well. So what I'm trying to highlight with all of these circles and things is that scope is not a, you know, a universal either or thing. It's like you have one scope, you can have scopes within scopes, and it is up to you to kind of keep track of where all of the scopes are and to make sure that your variables you declare are actually usable. Now, if that isn't you know, complicated enough, which it really isn't actually, it's actually pretty straightforward, there's some things that we need to call out that are more of a, a JavaScript language nuance, especially if you've used other programming languages where some of the stuff is a little different in how it behaves. And one such difference has to do with block scoping. So a block is essentially something that is enclosed by these brackets. So loops, the do while loops you've seen, the if statements, these are all considered blocks. Now in other languages, when you declare a variable inside a block, you get the same level of scoping behavior that you would if you were to declare a variable inside a function, but not in JavaScript. In JavaScript, functions are considered very unique, but the blocks themselves are not. So in this case, I have a function called check weight, and then I have an if statement where inside the if statement block, I have a variable called text that I'm declaring. So right after I'm having an alert statement, this makes sense. I have a var text and then I'm alerting what the value of text is and that should essentially display the value of no free shipping for you. Now the thing is, I'm having the same alert statement. This one is outside of the if statement block. It's outside of the block where the variable is declared. Now when I check alert, when I type in alert and try to check the value of the text variable, the thing is, I won't get undefined, which is what you might expect, but what I'll actually get is the same value of no free shipping for you. In JavaScript, if you're gonna have a block and declare variables inside it, you might as well declare the variables outside of that block because block scoping, at least with the var keyword, isn't really possible. Now, with that said, with the latest improvements to JavaScript, the latest ECMAScript 2015 or ES6, as you might have also heard of it, you have a new keyword called let. And in this case, let's look at another example. You know, I have a block statement, I have if true, and I have, before that actually, they have a variable called x equals 100. I'm declaring that one globally. Now within this, the block statement for if under the, the future is now function, I have let x equals 350, which is another way of you know, assigning a variable called x, declaring it and initializing to a value of 350. Now when I have alert x inside the if block, the value is being 350. That totally makes sense. Now here's what happens. Notice now I have another, another alert statement and this one is actually outside of the if block. And when I print this out, guess what value you see? You see a value of 100, not 350, we see a value of 100 because the let keyword actually kind of changes how your variables are declared. Instead of being declared inside the function block itself, like the var keyword, the let keyword actually allows your function to be declared into the block itself. So while in the past, the only scope you have here is the function, in this case, you have a scope with the features now function, but you also have a scope created as part of the, the if block. So this is kind of new, and notice that most browsers do not really support let or any of the new ECMAScript improvements in any certain level of certainty. So you know, keep, keep that in mind. So don't jump at using let immediately, just keep checking the various compatibility tables to see if let is available or not. The last thing we want to look at is something known as variable hosting. Hoisting, hoisting, that's a funny sounding word. So what this means is another little quirk of the JavaScript language. So here I have a variable called foo and I have it initialized to the word hello. And I have the function called do something clever. Now, when I have, in a look, let's look at the rest of the function as well. So after I have an alert statement, and then I have var foo equals goodbye, then I have another alert statement, and I'm just calling this function right here. So when I'm having do something clever, and when I call the alert statement, what do you think is gonna happen? What do you think is gonna happen when this line of code executes? Now, for the most part, based on what you've seen before, you'd assume that the word hello will be what, you get, what, you, what gets printed out. But the thing is, what actually gets printed out is the word undefined, the value undefined. And the reason, and hence the name hoisting, is that the moment your JavaScript compiler, the moment your browser is running JavaScript and it hits a function, the first thing it does, one of the first things it does before it does anything else 
it scans the entire function block and anything inside of it for variables. In this case, there's a var foo and it goes goodbye. It creates an entry for var foo, even though I haven't actually gotten to this line, at least mentally as a human being reading this code. So do something clever is read. It notices a var foo at the very bottom. So before this alert foo even gets hit, an entry for var foo equals undefined is created for me. It doesn't matter that I had a var foo declared at the very top globally. By having it declared inside this function, the, it gets overwritten, so at least within this function block. So right now, when I do alert foo, I get undefined. And it isn't until where var foo actually gets initialized to goodbye, it actually gets changed from undefined to the value of goodbye. But this whole concept of a variable, even though I haven't actually declared it explicitly, just by declaring it anywhere inside the function block, the same name, the same name at least, that variable is automatically declared with the value of undefined, and this variable is considered to have been hoisted by the by the compiler as part of getting to this part in my in my code. So keep that in mind if you are ever into a situation where a variable you're declaring is being redeclared inside a function and you're trying to use that variable in cases where you're using it before it's been declared into that function as in as you see right here. So there you have it, uh, a very quick overview. Actually, it wasn't really that quick. It was a little bit more of a slightly medium length overview of what you can do with variable scoping. And as you can see, you can declare everything globally and things will work just fine. But in general though, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna pollute your window object with every single variable you wanna use, mostly because it takes memory and it's also hard to keep track of your code. One of the nice things about scope is that it allows you to keep your code a little bit more self-contained. You know, parts of your functionality that you don't need at any given time, you can keep it off to the side and you can keep it away from the prying eyes of the rest of your code because you know, JavaScript is the best language out there when it comes to working on large scale applications or making sure that what you're doing isn't going to be stomping on something else in your code. And variable scope is one great way to ensure that the parts of your code you need to work with right now are available front and center and things you don't care about can be hidden away to the side inside another function or with let keyword inside of the block. So if you found this interesting and want to learn more about what you can do in JavaScript, go to crypto.com, whole bunch of articles on that topic. And if you need any help, if you have any questions, or just want to discuss something with other people, go to forum.crypt.com and you can find me everywhere on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So just ping me and I'll be happy to reply to you. And of course, if you found this interesting, by all means, buy my book, JS 101, JavaScript for Beginners, where I touch upon this topic as well as a boatload of other topics that have to do with JavaScript. So you can find it on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle editions. And with that, I will see you guys next time.